the start of our much-anticipated road trip took us to the south of Namaquiland to the quaint dorpy of Lurisfontein. Legend has it the town is named after a travelling Jewish salesman named Luri, but that is typical of the mystique that Namaquiland conjures up. What we did find, however, is the famed Wind Pump Museum, one of only two eclectic collections of windmills in the world, a stark tribute to the arid climate of the region. The collection of windmills in Lurisfontein, it's, it's one of two uh, collections in the world. And uh, it started off in 1976 with the, with the museum. Uh, you will see on the one side the original manufacturer and on the other side of the, of the inscription you would see the franchises or the different companies in South Africa that distributed the wind pumps over the years. Lurisfontein is also home to the Fred Turner Museum, a cultural tribute to the way of life of the track farmers of Namakuland, which features more than 1,000 items. We bid Lurisfontein farewell as our road trip heads south. A five kilometer detour leads to another hidden treasure, one of the world's largest quiver forests. These aloes grow to heights of four meters. They can resist drought indefinitely and live up to 400 years. We're on a farm Hanabos, which is about 22 k's from Liverpool. This whole area is highly protected. If you look around here, you will see that these aloes are all growing on north-facing slopes. And the rainfall here is about 175 mils a year. And the temperatures on this slope, you can imagine, height of summer must go up, up into the 40s. And all of the young plants germinate in the bush. So unless, and we're on the outer skirts here, on the outer region of the Cape Winter Rainfall Area. So I think that for germination you've got to have the right rain coming from the winter system and the right rain coming from the summer system for the seed to germinate and actually survive. Their name comes from the Khoisan's use of the bark for quivers. Further along the R357, we stumble upon a spectacular contradiction in the seemingly vast arid landscape, the Nivoteville waterfall. A 90-meter plunge into a lush gorge on the Duran River, this waterfall is a popular stopover for visitors flocking to the region in flower season. And as the sun climbs higher and heats up the earth, the flowers start to reveal themselves to us. Golden yellows and oranges carpet the landscape. We detour to the quaintly named farm of Popkalesfontein, a mecca for flowers as well as the beautiful scenery. Nivoteville is appropriately referred to as the bulb capital of the world home to a bulb nursery, cultivating flower bulbs for local and international distribution and creating vital jobs for the region. In the verlede uh, het ons uh, 2010 van 2000 af het ons meer as 1.1 miljoen bole hier geplant. En op dat stadium het ons tussen 30 en 40 kessels in geneem seizoen thee wanneer ons met, uh, uh, met die oes beginne, wanneer ons die uh, voorbereiding vir die, van grond gedoen het, dan het ons die mense ingeneem. In oktober maand oes, beginne ons met die oes en daarvan dan maak ons nog gereed om, so dat ons hulle kan uitvoer Holland toe. Hulle tyd wat hulle Holland toe gaan is vroeg december. So it is possible to sell tulips to Amsterdam. In part two of our road trip, we journey to Lilies Fontaine and Gummiskroon, where we meet the enigmatic Oma Hanna, who gives us a taste of some local delicacies. In Karkams, we visited the first of many conservation South Africa community upliftment and job creation projects under the Skeppis umbrella. Peter van Niekerk runs Karkams Technology Crafters, an innovative greenfields project that utilizes alien vegetation to create crafts. Peter has already created four jobs and is gearing up for expansion. What we did with Peter was initially started out with the memory sticks and he, um, with the working for water and working for wetlands, there's a lot of the prosopis tree, which is an alien tree that, that's um, taking over the, the landscape in the Makoland and it's depleting the, the natural water resources. So that wood Peter is then using and he makes the memory sticks and he's now um, expanded his products to also include um, fruit bowls, spoons, 
you name it, a, a lots of different um, wooden products. Um, we've partnered with the uh, municipality, for example, to provide um, blue gum wood, which is also a problem, alien wood. Um, there's lots of plantations in the Marco land. The whole idea with SCAPE is, is to, within the, the businesses and projects that we support, is to create a network of green businesses within the Namakaland region whereby they support each other. So if there is any byproducts of one project that another project can use to actually make a product, those byproducts won't end up on our landfill sites. It's an early start for us as we traverse the back roads high into the Kamisberger en route to Lelyfontein to catch up with two more Skippies projects. Lelyfontein is beautiful and started out as a mission station. It's the oldest town in the Makwaland and the site of a 1902 massacre during the Boer War. 35 Khoi, suspected of being British sympathizers, were killed by Boer leader Mani Maritz. The church is a national monument and the site of an innovative wetlands rehabilitation project. In 2009, my father came here um, and he heard about the natural water springs that was here. So he was quite curious to find out where they were and, and, and what, they were, what they were doing here. And then he came down and he saw that, that they were enclosed in a, in a forest of poplar trees. And um, then he, and in conjunction with Alan R, did the application at, at Skepis, sorry. And um, they got the funding and then we started clearing out the, 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 the poplar trees. Um, it's an exp expanded public works program um, funded by Sandbox. So we are the working on land section that rehabilitates now the, the wetlands. Vera Engelbrecht runs a lodge and a skeppies funded quickscarum in Lierlifontein, catering for adventurous travellers. The guest house is so three years old, but this is a bevondsing that we received from the National Development Agency in 2008 to the ons die gebouw begin ons is vijf vrouwens in een man ons het hom geregistreer as 'n cooperative en ons gaan baie goed aan ons hoop hoop om 'n sukses van dit te maak skeppies het baie bygedra tot die projek want die kookskerm het ontstaan deur skeppies ons het 'n charret gehad in 2004 of 6 En daar het hulle besluit op 'n kookroute. En dit is hoe dat die kookskerm ontstaan het. Their client base includes overland bikers, 4x4 enthusiasts, cyclists and of course visitors drawn by the flowers. It's uh, different because uh, there is the desert, there is the mountain, uh, there is the river and uh, the good wine no? and uh, I enjoy and uh, it's uh, good for off-road no? and uh, I like it. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. What we found is, is the differentiation. As you drive along it, it keeps changing. I mean every day we've seen such totally different um, scenery which has been wonderful. And so back down the imposing Kamisberger and onto Kamiskruen, named after a small copy that resembles the crown of a king. Kamiskruen has its origins as Boesdorp, eight kilometers away, now a ghost town on the tourist track. Its residents had to abandon the place because of a water shortage. The gateway to the Namakwa National Park is where we find Omahana, a veritable legend in Namakwa. Omahana runs a quirkscarum in Kamiskruen, another Skepi's project, and part of a broader objective. The whole idea of a network of sustainable green businesses within the Namakoland region, um, if it's work scarums, then they, they can be a, a specific route where a tourist can go from one work scarum in Kamiskruen to another one in Lillifontein and to another one in, in Garis, and that's the whole idea. Obviously, there were some of the work scarums that did not work out as planned, but with Vera and Omaana specifically that is still um, operating, the idea is working perfectly. If you get a tourist at Omaana and they are going up to Lillifant and Omaana will then actually mention Vera's there as well. So you can have a similar experience, maybe not exactly the same, because they try to make the, the products unique. Omahana is over 70 years old 
and cooks food the way the Namas have been doing for centuries, in black pots on an open fire. Here cooks here, come half and two days and then six of an. Here, make us must now for the mess and lekker plat kosse. Us make the kosse, so us also by us eyes in it. Us make the oven, us make the flies, and us make the uh, uh, stamp mills, us make the rice, us make the boinkies, us make the bamboo. That's as that uh, flies is, pot gebraaide flies is. Dan moet hij een zoet pampoen of een zoet patat bij je met zijn rijst. En dat het niet alles is, dan maken we nog een pudding wat nu pot gaat, maken we ook nog voor de bij. Oma Hanna wants to introduce traditional Nama huts on the adjacent plot to cater for a growing demand for an authentic experience. Ons is hier speciaal voor die blommen gekomen hier die jaar om te komen kijken hoe lijkt het, want allemaal praat ze vreselijk bij van dit. En toen ons besluit nu ons kom hier die jaar om te kijken. In the Namako region, we find one of South Africa's three biodiversity hotspots. Together, they contain more than 20,000 plant species, half of which are found nowhere else on Earth. The conservation of South Africa's hotspots is vital not only for the inherent value of their species and natural areas, but because of the benefits they bring through sustainable resource. Joining us in our Cape Town studio for more on this is Sarah Frazee, Chief Executive Officer of Conservation South Africa. Sarah, thank you so much for making the time to join us now how do you go about identifying areas of intervention that you then deem as hotspots conservation south africa is as part of the conservation international network works in biodiversity hotspots these are areas like namako land which have one percent of all of the world's total species um, found there and nowhere else in the world and also they're an area where there's a tremendous amount of pressure on on those species and they're their likelihood of existence requires interventions to find ways that we can use and integrate conservation principles into the way that we use land. Of course, sustainability must be a very critical element, uh, a, a, a very critical aspect and element of your work. How do you ensure that uh, the sustainability of projects once they leave your curatorship? The sustainability element is about um, building capacity, particularly in financial literacy. Again, another reason why partnership is important for us. Um, it's not a, a necessarily a skill we have, but through partners, we're bringing in financial literacy training. Um, we bring in the natural resource management expertise. We bring in partners um, from de the Department of Agriculture in terms of engaging around those activities. So. I think building a strong network of partners actually supports the sustainability um, because all of those partners working together are empowering people through the different skill sets that we're all transferring into Namako landers to, to take care of their land into the future. Now, of course, tourism, uh, Sarah, is also another important aspect of your work. When we think about the fact that, you know, jobs in tourism are uh, created very quickly and often very cheaply, is there a focus on tourism development across the projects that you run? Through one of our initiatives, the Skepis Fund, we've invested quite substantially in ecotourism development. In areas where there's new tourism developments, um, you can find that they end up developing in a way that they're competing against each other and it doesn't actually build the regional tourism if everybody's selling the exact same product. So they all sell to the same market. So the idea of a design charrette is to bring um, all of the community stakeholders who are interested, all of the guest house owners, all of the, the bus operators, all of the, the attraction operators, Namakwa National Park, for example, the, the reserves, to bring them all together and say, how do we design a, a five-day tourism package where we're marketing each other instead of this guest house competing against that guest house, how do we make one more of an upscale, one more of a, a, a backpackers or an educational tour type of tourism attraction?